welcome to the Fiber Optics Meeting Association uh, monthly webinar. Uh, this month we're featuring a webinar on smart pathways to fiber optic sensing. And we're very pleased to have uh, as our presenter Scott Gardner of Duraline. Uh, Scott is the director of the accounts at Duraline and has been there for uh, over a dozen years and has had a variety of leadership positions in uh, sales and marketing and commercial operations. And his background is an electrical engineer from the University of Tennessee. We're very pleased also that Scott has been very involved in a number of aspects of this and is uh, very much involved with, uh, with our association. Uh, Scott, we look forward to your presentation. Okay, thank you so much, Mark. Again, welcome everyone. My name is Scott Gardner, and as Mark said, I'm the director of key accounts for Duraline. I've been with Duraline for a little over 12 years now, and have been in the telecommunications industry for about 24 years. For the next short while, I'll be your guide as we walk through smart pathways for fiber optic sensing. Let's start with a brief non-technical overview of what fiber optic sensing entails. Fiber optic sensing is where you can monitor a fiber optic cable from a single location via pulses of light traveling down the fiber. This is a 24-7 continuous monitoring over long, continuous distances. The fiber itself is the sensor, so there are literally thousands of sensing points along the route of whatever asset you are trying to monitor. The fiber is passive, so there is no power required along the asset. Fiber optic sensing can monitor temperature, strain, and or vibration. The fiber optic system can handle sensing and regular communication needs. The technology is easily upgradable because with the fiber in place, the equipment that analyzes it can be replaced as technology advances. As you can see from this slide, there are many, many types of assets that can benefit from fiber optic sensing. Pipelines can be monitored for both leaks and unauthorized access. Railways can be monitored, power cables can be monitored, oil and gas wells, dams, reservoirs, roadways, and even industrial monitoring applications. Some companies are even seeing that fiber optic cables can measure seismic activity in other words, earthquakes. Does anyone remember the outage in the Atlanta airport on December 17th of 2017? I do because I had just flown through Atlanta about one and a half hours before this outage. This USA Today article states that Delta lost $40 million as a direct result of the outage at the Atlanta airport. The other $20 million was lost due to a winter storm. The $40 million loss occurred when a power cable overheated and caught fire, resulting in a power outage in an electrical room adjacent to the airport. I would make the claim that when you have assets that support this kind of revenue each day, that it would make good business sense to protect yourself from an outage of this magnitude. Could fiber optic sensing have prevented this outage and alerted the power company to the fact that a cable was beginning to overheat? thereby allowing them to take some sort of action to prevent it? We can't say for sure, but this technology, fiber optic sensing, can be used to monitor the temperature of power cables. So perhaps it could have prevented this major outage. So you're quite possibly asking yourself, what is conduit? Well, a conduit is a hollow, high-density polyethylene pathway. Pretty simple, really. It comes in long, continuous lengths with typical distances around a mile on a single, single reel. Small conduit, you can fit more on the same size reel. Larger conduit, you'd be able to fit less on the, same, on a, the equivalent reel. It's primarily used to protect fiber optic cables underground, although there are aerial versions that are available. Let's talk about conduit design and the nomenclature we use to describe a conduit. At the top right of this page, we see the three attributes that describe every conduit. These are the ID, or inside diameter, the OD, or outside diameter, and the thickness of the conduit wall, also known as wall thickness. Duraline's conduits can be ordered with silicore, 
which is a super slippery layer that reduces the coefficient of friction inside the conduit, making cable installation faster and without damaging the cable. Even on a high friction point like a bend, where the cable comes into contact with the conduit inner wall, the silicore's low coefficient of friction keeps the contact point from heating up and preventing damage to the conduit or the cable. Pathways come in a pretty wide range of diameters. You can see here that it ranges from five millimeters, that's not a lot bigger than a coffee stirrer stick really, uh, all the way up to a six inch conduit, and these would be standard for telecommunications. So what are the components in a fiber optic sensing system? Well, they're the fiber cable and the conduit, the interrogator that reads the real-time signal off of the fiber cable, and the processor that analyzes that signal. The intelligent monitoring software then presents the network operator with an analysis of what it detects based off of what is considered a normal operational state for the asset being monitored. If there's a normal amount of vibration when the asset is operating, the system would learn what that looks like and then only alarm when an event is outside that normal operating condition. A leak in a pipeline would have a different acoustic signature than normal vibration, for example, and would set off an alarm pinpointing the exact location of the leak. Here are some of the main reasons why you should use conduit as an integral part of a fiber optic sensing system. We'll look at each one in a little more detail, but we have, there's installation advantages. We have protection of the fiber itself, which is always good. We'll have a permanent pathway for upgrades or changes. We'll have a pathway for our main communication needs. And lastly, we can even have a revenue opportunity. Start with installation advantages. There really is not a significant amount of degradation in fiber optic sensing effectiveness when a conduit is used. But this varies depending on the technology of the sensing equipment, the cable design, and the specific sensing application. As fiber optic sensing technology continues to evolve, the sensitivity of the equipment should only improve over time. It's certainly easier to handle unexpected changes in the route, such as having to go around a culvert or other unexpected obstacle when you're placing conduit versus when you're placing cable directly in the ground. Conduit can help reduce costly fiber splice points and the conduit can be locatable, while the fiber cable itself can be made with all dielectric materials, making the fiber cable non-conductive and more craft friendly to access. Next is protection of the fiber. One of Conduit's uh, main advantages is that it gives mechanical protection to the fiber cable. This protection is both during installation of the fiber cable and over the entire life of the fiber cable when it's operating. Direct buried fiber cable may require additional protection to withstand environmental conditions, whereas the Conduit can provide that protection instead. A permanent pathway for upgrades or changes. The conduit acts as a permanent protected pathway for upgrades or changes whenever you need to make them. The dig once legislation that passed recently is a good concept. It really applies to DOTs, but the thought process is still the same. Regardless of the application, every asset owner should plan for the future now when installing a network of any kind. Why should you do this? because we really don't know what we'll need our network to do in the future. A communication pathway. Even if you're using fiber optic sensing, sensing, there's still a great need for fiber for standard communications, cameras, data transfer, security, and redundancy. Revenue opportunity. Empty pathways can be utilized for other purposes, granting access to difficult right-of-ways, or can even be leased to carriers. We'll talk more about this in an upcoming slide. So you've decided to install a pathway 
but now you want to know what your pathway choices are. In a more traditional system, one, two, or perhaps three standard conduits could be installed together, as you see on the left side of the page. However, the outer diameter of these standard ducts is quite large compared to the smaller OD microducts seen on the right side of the page. When these smaller microducts are packaged together under one sheath at the factory, we call this product Future Path. As you can see, there are combinations for outside plan applications all the way from two microducts under a single sheath up to eight microducts under a single sheath, as you see in the very bottom right diagram. There are many more configurations of Future Path than what we show here, but this gives you a good overview of some of the most common configurations. What are some of the advantages of Future Path? First note that in all Future Path products, the ripcord seen here is small orange dots at the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position are standard and allow the user to perform a mid span access or an end access to remove the sheath and easily access the microducts, just like you would access buffer tubes in a loose tube fiber cable. Also, the Future Path comes standard with the locate wire, seen here in the 4 o'clock position, represented by the black dot. This provides locatability of the pathway. Future Path has been located using this tone wire at depths of 15 to 20 feet. In this example of a seven-way Future Path, we have many options for today and for the future of the network, giving us maximum flexibility. We now have a choice to make. We could have sensing fiber in the same cable we use for standard communications, or we could use two separate cables depending on your needs and your specific application. In this example, we've chosen to use a separate sensing fiber cable. Let's put that sensing fiber cable in the green microduct. A sensing fiber cable would typically be very small and contain less than 12 fibers, perhaps even just one or two fibers. We could then use a separate larger fiber cable for our standard communication needs. In other words, data, telephone, security cameras, et cetera. This would typically be a 72 fiber or a 144 fiber, but could have more or less fibers depending on what traffic you want to carry over this fiber. We now have several empty microducts. Let's be strategic and plan ahead and keep one microduct for future fiber upgrades or as a spare in case we need a new fiber cable down the road. What can we do with these remaining empty microducts? Well, we could lease these empty microducts to carriers, cellular backhaul providers, or anyone who might want quick and easy access to the pathway in our right of way. Now our network is not only smart, but it can generate revenue for the owner. If you want to keep more empty microducts for the future, you have that option. Again, you have maximum flexibility when you choose Future Path. In this comparison of a standard inch and a quarter duct on the left and a seven way 12.7 millimeter Future Path design on the right, you can see that both have about the same outside diameter. In other words, the amount of dirt that the contractor has to remove to get these products in the ground is the same. Because of that, the cost to install either one is essentially equal. The pathway on the left has one standard conduit with room for one standard fiber cable. The pathway on the right has room for seven micro cables. The micro cables are smaller, denser versions of fiber cable that must be installed in conduit for protection. The strands of glass that carry the data are exactly the same as in a standard fiber optic cable. As you can see from the illustration above, there is more air around the standard fiber cable, but much less air around the micro cables. Studies have shown that the optimal cable design for fiber optic sensing is one where the fibers are tightly coupled to the cable rather than having excess air surrounding the fibers. Air dampens the signal, so reducing the amount of air around both the fiber and the fiber cable is ideal. The future path design allows for much higher fill ratios and therefore less air surrounding the micro cable. 
using micro cables in future path is an unexpected benefit for fiber optic sensing. So you might be asking yourself, this future path sounds great, but how do I install this stuff? Am I going to need special equipment? Well, there's good news here. You install it the exact same way you install standard conduit. In other words, you use industry standard installation practices. Nothing special is required to install this future path. So let's look at uh, the pictures on the screen here of the equipment. Here we see a directional bore on the left of the page. This is often used to drill underneath or alongside a roadway or sidewalk. An open, an open trench install on the top right, this would be a very common installation in a, in a new build, like a new neighborhood, for example. And a plow installation in the bottom right. Future Path is rugged enough to withstand all of these industry standard installation practices. In fact, the seven-way 12.7 millimeter Future Path actually has more tensile strength than an inch and a quarter SDR 11 conduit. So it's very rugged, very robust, very reliable. Sometimes mother nature offers environments that are a challenge. Be it this rocky terrain or these burrowing pocket gophers, which are little critters with big teeth that can wreak havoc with your network. There are specialty products such as armored conduit or armored future path that can protect your fiber cable. Testing is underway with several fiber optic sensing companies to determine what effect the armoring has on fiber optic sensing capability. Let's look at a couple of examples of where fiber cable and conduit placement is suggested based on the recommendation of the Fiber Optic Sensing Association. The image on the left is where the fiber cable is suggested to be placed for a distributed acoustic sensing system on a pipeline. Basically, anywhere in the top hemisphere of the pipeline is ideal. This is represented by the dark blue line in the graphic. Placing the fiber and conduit at a distance of less than three meters or about 10 feet from the pipeline. The closer, the better. Next, we see where the fiber is suggested to be placed in a rail environment. And here we want to stay about three to 15 feet from the track center, or the track center line, and at a depth of about one to two feet. So it's designated by the light blue shaded area on the right side graphic. Always consult your fiber optic sensing company to determine the best placement for your fiber optic cable and conduit to get the maximum sensing capability, depending on the exact technology used for your specific sensing application. You might be asking yourself, what if my asset is already deployed? Can I add fiber optic sensing to it? While the answer might not always be yes, you can often add fiber optic sensing to your existing asset. Here is pathway being installed next to an existing rail line. Michael's Construction owns several of these rail plows and has been doing conduit installation beside rail for many years. And because of that, this is exactly how you could install fiber optic sensing next to your existing rail asset. Here is pathway going in next to an existing roadway, but this is also how it could be installed on top of an existing pipeline or around the security perimeter. A vibratory plow places the conduit a few feet below the surface quickly and easily. This exact same plow or one very close to it could be used to place conduit next to a security fence or by a pipeline. Okay, so we've got the pathway in. Now for the, uh, the sensor itself. So how do you place the fiber cable? Well, there's some good options for this too. Let's look at a few options. First is air-assisted fiber cable placement. In this picture, you can see on top of the gray boxes is the jetting machine itself. You'll see a fairly large air compressor in the back, uh, back left there, and you'll see the fiber cable in the uh, center background there. Air-assisted cable placement is the fastest way to install, averaging two to 300 feet per minute. Standard or micro cables can be placed in with compressed air. You can see in this photo, the orange air compressor in the, in the back, the jetting machine in the foreground, and the fiber cable paying off in the very background. 
The fiber is then installed through the conduit, in this case, a green conduit you can see in the bottom left corner going up all the way to the jetting machine. Pulling your cable is another option. In this case, using a hydraulically powered capstan winch, install speeds of about 100 to 150 feet per minute on average are typical. This is the traditional way of installing cable, but it is much slower than jetting and there is much more load placed directly on the cable itself. It is important to note that micro cable cannot be installed in this way due to its lower than normal tensile strength. Water jetting is yet another installation option. This is a slow process, but very long distances can be achieved with water jetting. In this picture, a cable went through conduit that went underneath the lake. You can see it carefully if you look at the top picture on the right, you can see the lake in the background. In this particular installation that our field engineers attended, the cable was floated through conduit over two and a half miles in a single shot without any access point. There was no other way to access it. It either was gonna go two and a half miles and come out the other end, or they were gonna pull the fiber cable back. The last installation option would be CIC, which stands for cable and conduit. This involves the conduit being extruded around the fiber cable so that when conduit leaves our factory, it already has the fiber cable inside. This eliminates the fiber cable needing to be installed in the field, like in the other three methods we just covered. The cable and conduit method saves installation time so that when the conduit arrives on site and, and is installed, the fiber cable inside is ready to be spliced and can begin working immediately. Here's a more graphic representation of the parts of a fiber optic sensing system. We're gonna have our fiber optic cable and conduit, seen in the top left graphic, placed near the asset we want to monitor. We have an interrogator, which reads the light, and then a processor, which analyzes the light signal, seen at the bottom. Lastly, we have a monitoring station where an operator would be at a workstation, monitoring the asset anyway, but now with the assistance of a fiber optic cable, monitoring every inch of the asset 24 hours a day, seven days a week in real time. Let's highlight a couple of specific applications where this technology is being used today. Here's one application in which a company by the name of Integrated Roadways is developing a smart roadway which uses microducts and fiber optic cable to sense the conditions of the roadway. It can analyze traffic patterns, detect accidents or traffic delays, and can even report in the condition of the pavement itself. Integrated Roadways is already deploying this technology with the Colorado Department of Transportation in a five-year proof of concept trial. Pipelines are quickly becoming a common use for fiber optic sensing today. In an open trench application seen here, the maximum amount of dirt is removed, effectively making a trench for the pipeline to lay in. Once everything is in place, that dirt is then moved back on top of the pipeline. In this photo, you can see the future path, orange in color, has been attached directly on top of the pipeline for maximum sensing capability. Strapping the pathway to the pipe is obviously not an option when retrofitting an existing below grade pipeline with fiber optic sensing. Here's a new pipeline installation project in Damascus, Arkansas, where the pipeline is 2,200 feet long, so about half a mile. It was installed using a directional bore, and this is a 20-inch crude oil pipeline. The future path was pulled in with the boring head, seen on the left, just above the wood block. The future path was attached using a special metal channel welded onto the boring head, as seen in the picture on the left. If you look closely, you can see the metal channel with the future path disappearing into the channel. This protected the future path and kept it attached to the boring head as it went in alongside the pipeline. Water was used to jet the fiber into the future path after the pipeline was placed.
Here's another fiber optic sensing pipeline project in Seminole, Texas. A fairly shallow open trench design, as you can see. In this project, the pipeline was 12,000 feet long. It was an eight inch high pressure water line. The future path was placed approximately 14 inches from the line. You can see it on the left there to the left of the, the green water line. And fiber was air jetted in after placement of the future path. Here was a very unique project where the future path was placed along the directional bore that went under a river, attached to the pipeline as it was being installed. The future path already had fiber in it prior to the install. So as you can see on the right side, the installation itself could be monitored using fiber optic sensing. They actually uh, put a board on the side of the future path reel, monitored up a little patch and splice panel, and then could hook up the OTDR in between sections when the, the, neither the pipeline nor the future path were moving. This was a very innovative forward thinking design to have the fiber in place during installation. Here's another view of the same pipeline installed, but from different angles. This was a 3,168 foot directional bore install under the North Saskatchewan River. Two of the seven, two of the Duraline seven-way 14 by 10 future path products were utilized. In the picture on the right, you can see the two orange reels of future path, 180 degrees apart on either side of the pipeline. This pipeline was a 24-inch steel pipeline that is now being successfully monitored using fiber optic sensing technology. And lastly, a super cool picture of the same pipeline going underneath the river, but just from a different angle. The cranes had to actually lift the entire pipeline to make the angle necessary to go underneath the river. Again, it was a 24 inch pipeline, so that's a lot of weight and probably doesn't bend very easily. And you can see even more clearly now, the two reels of future path simultaneously going in with the pipeline, again, about 180 degrees apart. I hope that you found this, this webinar informative and that you consider smart pathways for your fiber optic sensing needs. This concludes our webinar for today, but I think we'll have some uh, time for questions. And my contact information is there on the screen if you uh, want to reach out to me. Mark, I'll turn it back over to you for questions. Thank you very much uh, uh, and uh, for a very informative presentation. Um, you mentioned the uh, dig once uh, legislation requirement that uh, uh, in when infrastructure is being put in by uh, with the highways that uh, uh, the facility be made available. Could you expand a little bit about the, how that works and what the benefits of that are? Sure. I mean, obviously, the dig once legislation finally passed and, and now is a law, but all it really requires uh, the DOTs to do is to kind of come up with a plan for the future. It, it, it absolutely doesn't require them to install uh, conduit or anything, but it's, it, it's, it's again a step in the right direction and uh, telling, you know, our government to think about the future, our DOTs to think about the future, because I think they realize you can't just keep coming in and, and tearing up the, the roadway or, or even between the interstate where it's typically grass. You can't just keep coming in and putting a new pathway in every year, every other year. So, again, a step in the right direction. Hopefully, our DOTs will. Um, treat that well, and, and we'll start to use products like FuturePath where they can uh, work a little bit smarter. Thank you. Uh, can a conduit uh, be retrofitted on an existing asset, say a pipeline that was installed uh, 20 years ago? It can. It's, it's a little more difficult. Obviously, you then have a balance because you have a, a working asset. Again, let's say it's a pipeline, for example, and something's flowing through that pipeline. So, uh, be it petroleum, water, sulfur, whatever, whatever you're flowing through that pipeline, natural gas, you're obviously going to want to get the conduit and the fiber as close to it as you can, but not too close to it so you don't damage it. So obviously each pipeline operator might say, hey, I don't want you getting within three feet of my pipe, no closer than three feet, or they're going to have some number, uh, some distance that they're comfortable with. 
Uh, but from a fiber optic sensing standpoint, you want to get it as close as you can so that you can monitor the asset as closely as you can. So there's simply a trade-off there. Um, and there would be some limitations if for some reason a pipeline were buried 30 feet underground, uh, that would be very difficult to plow the uh, conduit or the fiber that close to the asset. But, but most, most assets are buried, uh, you know, 5 to 15 feet underground, and you're going to be able to get a... Uh, conduit close enough to it so that you can still monitor it, but yet not have any chance of getting too close to damage it. Thank you. What is the largest uh, diameter conduit that's available? And could you kind of address so, kind of what the, the pros and cons in terms of picking a particular size? Sure, sure. Uh, so basically the largest standard conduit that we would have would be a six inch conduit. But in terms of what you put most fiber optic cables in, it's really two inch conduit and, and, and lower, um, or you use one of our future path designs. And so what we like to do is start with what are your needs and which fiber cable do you need? Then once you know that, you're, you're gonna know the diameter of the, the OD of the cable you wanna use. And based on that cable OD, we're then gonna recommend the right size microduct ID uh, that will go go with that cable. And then you simply have a choice of how many pathways do you want. Do you want two? Do you want four? Do you want seven? Um, you saw in the example of that one pipeline, they put in two seven-way future paths. So they had 14 microducts or 14 pathways uh, to work with. So that's, I mean, that's a lot, or I think that's a lot. Um, it just really is going to depend on what, what you want your network to do. Um, but if you only use a few microducts, you're going to have a lot of pathways left to sell to other people if you want. Again, you can generate revenue with that. So sometimes you're going to pay a little extra up front, but the more pathways you have to lease out, the more revenue you can make. And perhaps a follow-up question to that is, what's the lifespan for a conduit? That's a great question. That depends a little bit on what environment it's in, you know, how acidic the soil is. Um, are you near the ocean and there's a lot of uh, salt or you have a lot of uh, acid rain, but we, we have conduits that have been up in the air and up in the air in New York City for 35 years and are still uh, functioning today. Uh, so polyethylene has a pretty long lifetime, but it really depends on all the environmental aspects uh, as, as to exactly how long. But again, certainly uh, going to last you 20 to 30 years on average. Some some applications longer, uh, some shorter. Okay. And, and of all the applications you discussed today, uh, which application has been the most prevalent uh, in your experience for fiber optic sensing? I think today it would have to be the pipelines, but there's obviously uh, new companies like Integrated Roadways who are trying to use it. I mean, think about the uh, number of roadways in our country. Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, so that could have a huge impact. And then rail would be the other one. Um, it's been fairly common to install conduit next to rail lines because they have a nice open knee right, uh, right of way. Uh, but now they could have fiber for their uh, communication needs. But now they could go back and install uh, a sensing fiber uh, or they could possibly use their existing fiber cable for sensing. So I think those are, those are probably the big three right now. Uh, certainly intrusion and security, you could put conduit around a nuclear facility and, and uh, monitor, uh, obviously, uh, want to know if there's any intrusion there. So it has a lot of applications that I think are going to come into their own as the technology progresses. It's a relatively new technology, so like anything, it's going to grow rapidly, and the, uh, the number of uses is, is only going to grow over time. You mentioned intrusion, and, and you also mentioned some of the, the smart roadways or the, the uh, roadway applications. Um, a lot, there's been a lot of talk about smart cities. Are what are the, some of the applications that uh, people are talking about? He possibly using fiber optic sensing and, and obviously conduits as well in order to support that. Yeah, obviously, I think just the fiber used for communications is going to be the biggest application for the smart cities. But um, I think there's also, you know, safety aspects. So a city is going to want to know, hey, there's been a wreck on our interstate. All this traffic's going to get rerouted. We need to get our, you know, our police force over to a certain exit and help people get off the interstate. So I, I think there's a lot of different uses. But 
but really for the smart cities, just the fiber communications is going to be the biggest. But but can sensing go along with that? Absolutely. Well, that's very helpful. Um, uh, I know we've kind of reached uh, the end of the particular questions we have so far, but I realize you also have your uh, contact information, and so folks who have more specialized requests or information that they'd like to have uh, can easily get in touch with you. Um, for those who didn't have a chance or want to share this with somebody else to, to, to ask a question or to follow the whole presentation, uh, this presentation will be posted on our uh, posted website and also on our, our YouTube center, uh, our, uh, sorry, our YouTube page. Also, next uh, month, uh, we will be having a presentation from the uh, Hi-Fi Engineering, which is one of the new members of uh, um, uh, FOSA, and they'll be talking about their particular approach to uh, the various solutions. But Scott, thank you very much for uh, a very informative presentation. Thank you very much, and again, thank you to FOSA for this opportunity.